This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hyrule is a land eternally bound to a cycle of destruction and rebirth. Civilizations built during eras of prosperity are burned to ash when darkness inevitably once again falls upon the kingdom. This darkness usually takes the form of Ganon, the ever-resurrecting demon king, though other evils like Vati and Demise have risen to lay claim to the land. But these villains aren't alone. They're accompanied by legions of minions, enemies either bought, brainwashed, summoned or threatened into joining the legions of darkness. Bulblins, Lazalfos, the measly Choo Choo and the hulking Lionel, the Zelda series is famous for its unique and interesting array of enemies. So let's go through my personal top 5 enemies found in the 3D Zelda games. Though for this list I'm going to do something different. I'm not going to list my favourite enemy type in general, like Lazalfos, Iron Knuckle, etc. I'll rank each enemy on my favourite iteration of the monster. So let me know down in the comments after the video what your favourite versions of Zelda enemies are, subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content, and let's look at the nightmares which terrorise Hyrule. Number 5. Moblin the Wind Waker Out of all recurring enemies, very few have changed more than the Moblins. Originally appearing in the very first game as bulldog-like goblins, but since taking on a more pig-like appearance, Moblins form much of the muscle of a villain's army in Zelda games. Despite their drastic changes in appearance, there's always one trait which remains the same. Moblins are huge with Skyward Sword's lumbering brutes being the largest of their kind. Breath of the Wild's moblins took on perhaps their most unique appearance yet, an incredibly tall, spindly pig creature with long, thin limbs and a large snout, hugely different to their appearance in, say, Ocarina of Time. They were even planned to appear in Twilight Princess with a nightmare-inducing giant set of razor-sharp teeth, but were dropped for some reason during development. But despite their many unique forms, my favourite appearance of these hulking demons has to be in the Wind Waker. The Wind Waker's moblins are definitely the most iconic iteration of the enemy, and are probably the most iconic enemy in the game. They're gigantic pig-like humanoids, not only incredibly tall but wide too, with great spears carried by massive, tattooed arms. They wear a strange Egyptian-like headpiece and decorate themselves with skull necklaces. Like everything in the game, these creatures ooze character. While Link is sneaking through the Forsaken Fortress, they'll sniff around for him, using their large snouts to try and track his scent, and when they find him, their faces light up with a grin which is equal parts hilarious and terrifying. Fighting these moblins still highlights their character. Though they can swing with massive, powerful sweeps of their spears, they'll often smack around or even kill nearby moblins, and when hit from behind will hop around in pain. There's even one moblin in particular, called Mo, who has some sort of relationship with Windfall Island's Maggie, who writes letters to the monster. It's not clear if Mo reciprocates this love in quite the same way, however. While Moblins are in every appearance in a 3D Zelda game memorable and unique, there's no incarnation I love more than the cartoonish, vibrant brutes found in the Wind Waker. They display so much personality in every little detail. How they look, how they move, how they fight. Wind Waker's Moblins are somehow some of the most charming and comical enemies in the series, while simultaneously in early game being some of the most terrifying. Number 4. Dark Nut, Twilight Princess Just like the Moblins, the Dark Nut is an enemy which first appeared in the original game in 1986, but was later completely redesigned for the Wind Waker. Originally, Dark Nuts were simply heavily armoured enemies, supposedly some sort of corrupted soldier, but by the time of the Wind Waker had evolved into monstrous dog-like humanoids clad in thick plate armour and carrying giant broadswords. This appearance of the Dark Nut is amazing. 
Invulnerable to regular attacks unless Link is able to skillfully slice its armor's weak points, revealing the creature within. If disarmed, these Dark Nuts will even fight Link with martial arts, ironically more dangerous than when they're equipped with their swords. But despite how much I love the Wind Waker's Dark Nuts, there's one appearance of the Dark Knights I feel is the quintessential appearance of the enemy, Twilight Princess. Dark Nuts appear in a few places in the game, though most notably a single Dark Nut serves as the mini-boss of the Temple of Time, one of the best fights of its kind in the game. Upon entering the room, Link can see a single Black Knight standing in the center, back turned to the hero. When he approaches it, the Dark Nut will turn to face him, swinging its gargantuan black sword in a challenge. The Dark Nuts of Twilight Princess are incredibly challenging foes. Like in The Wind Waker, Link must pick apart their thick armor by striking at their weak spots, avoiding their incredibly powerful swings. Part of what I love about these Dark Nuts are their sound effects. Not only their grunts and heavy metallic footsteps, but the sharp clangs as swords clash together, or as the Master Sword bounces off thick plate armor, sending sparks flying. After finally breaking the last of the knight's armor, a second phase of the battle begins, with the Dark Nut casting aside its broadsword to fight with a smaller sword, and wearing lighter armor which allows it to move faster. Dark Nuts also frequently appear in Hyrule Castle, with a different design, with wing-like protrusions on their helmets, similar to their earlier appearances. Twilight Princess's Dark Nuts, while with very little in the way of personality, are a challenging opponent, forcing Link to prove his swordsmanship against a worthy adversary. Thanks again to the lovely folks at Squarespace for sponsoring this video, who are offering 10% off your first payment if you sign up at squarespace.com forward slash Zeltic, where you can try the service completely free for two weeks. The platform makes it incredibly simple to build quality websites, even if you're not familiar with coding at all. I thought I'd do something fun with my Squarespace site, zeltic.co.uk. I've included a secure secret page here using the Squarespace password feature. There's a clue somewhere in this video leading to the password, and I'll give away a Riderlink amiibo to the first person who makes it to this secret page. Squarespace offers full 24-hour support for any issues or queries you've got about the platform, and it's all built in, so no plugins or extras are needed. If you'd like to try it out, head over to squarespace.com forward slash Zeltic to start a free trial, and grab 10% off your first purchase. Number 3. Redead the Wind Waker The Redead is the least common enemy on this list. Despite its popularity, Zelda's zombies have only appeared in Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, the Wind Waker and Triforce Heroes, with the incorrectly named Redead Knights in Twilight Princess actually being Gibdos, a similar but separate enemy. Redeads epitomize the darker side of Zelda games, appearing in labyrinths and tunnels, sewers and torture chambers. In all appearances they're tall, skeletal figures, in some instances having their faces hidden behind eerie wooden masks, like in the Nintendo 64 games and Triforce Heroes. The signature ability of the Redead is their scream, a blood-curdling shriek which will paralyze Link where he stands, unable to flee from the approaching nightmare, who will latch onto the hero and begin to wear away at his health. Though Ocarina of Time's Redead is the most iconic, with their haunting wooden masks, found in places such as the ruined Castle Town, Shadow Temple and Bottom of the Well, it's the Wind Waker's Redeads which for me are the best incarnation of the enemy. Redeads in the Wind Waker lack their masks of their other appearances, instead taking on a more tribal, voodoo zombie-like appearance. Tattoos cover their blue-grey skin, and their eerily Hylian ears are pierced by large hooped earrings. However, the most striking thing about the Redeads are their two piercing, burning red eyes which fix on Link in a horrifying glare when the creature notices him, accompanied, of course, by a spine-chilling scream. These Redeads are found in the Earth Temple primarily, either waiting in the fetal position or lurking within giant stone coffins. These Redeads are some of the best examples of the Zelda series' mastery of balancing light and dark in its games. Despite appearing in one of the most jovial, warm games of the series, 
These are, in my opinion, some of the most terrifying enemies we've seen yet. Number 2. Lionel Breath of the Wild Just like the Moblin and the Darknut, the Lionel is a veteran of the series, dating back to the NES Legend of Zelda. These centaur-lion hybrids are staples of the 2D Zelda games, appearing in the original A Link to the Past, the Oracle games, and A Link Between Worlds. But it's their 3D debut which has secured them as one of the series' most iconic enemies in Breath of the Wild. Despite strangely not being granted boss status, with no overhead health bar or unique battle theme, Lynels are perhaps the single most dynamic and exciting enemy in the game. They're absolutely gargantuan, many, many times larger than Link, with the body of a giant horse, the torso of an extremely muscular humanoid, and the head of a lion. Lynels are highly intelligent, highly territorial beings. If Link wanders too close to their habitat, they'll stare him down, issuing a challenge. And if Link comes any closer, the Lionel will engage, either using a giant steel bow at long range, or a variety of different weapons in close combat, ranging from elemental weapons to their own class of brutal weaponry. Lionels not only fight with these weapons, but can also use their physical might against Link, as well as breathe fire. These beasts can even teleport, ambushing Link if he's inaccessible to them, or fleeing from battle by vanishing and reappearing in a burst of red magic. They'll even give chase to Link if he tries to escape on horse or bike, galloping after him on their horse legs, leading to some of the most intense moments in the game. Link can counter these titans with his own set of techniques, not only making use of flurry rushes and parries, but actually mounting the Lionel like a horse to attack it from behind before it bucks him off. While Breath of the Wild's total number of unique enemies is somewhat disappointing, enemies like the Lionel are absolutely phenomenal, and are easily some of the best the series has ever seen. Not only are they a true challenge, especially higher health variants like the Silver or Gold Lionels, the sheer variety of techniques and attacks the Lionel can use make each encounter exciting. I can remember one of my first encounters with one resulted in me cowering behind a rock for cover only to be killed outright when the Lionel shot arrows into the air, which arced downwards and rained death on me from above. Number 1. Bokoblin Breath of the Wild While the Lionel is incredibly iconic, the toughest, most brutal enemy in Breath of the Wild's world, there's one enemy for me which tops it, the humble Bokoblin. Bokoblins appeared first in The Wind Waker, and have turned up since in Twilight Princess, Skyward Sword, and Breath of the Wild. In most games, the Bokoblin is little more than a minor threat, but it's the most recent iteration that lands them on this list. Bokoblins are found in all corners of Hyrule by the time of Link's resurrection. They're small, humanoid, pig-like creatures, who band together to form small gangs, shacking up in skull-shaped rocks or fortified campsites. Despite their mundanity, I've mentioned before that Breath of the Wild's Bokoblin is, in my opinion, the single best enemy in the entire series. Alongside the Guardians, Bokoblins are the flagship enemy of the game, not only getting their own amiibo, but featuring heavily in promotional material and artwork. It's clear just how much care and effort went into the design of these pigmen. There's no enemy in the series with more personality and charm. Bokoblins are incredibly simple-minded creatures, though they're intelligent enough to craft their own crude weapons, as well as hunt for food which they cook on campfires. In combat, Bokoblins attack with a variety of different weapons, as well as attempting to punch Link if they're unarmed, or find rocks on the floor to throw at him. They'll even throw barrels or other similar objects at him, as well as light their wooden weapons on fire, and kick away bombs that Link throws at them and even get dizzy after performing advanced moves like a spin attack. But their personalities don't only shine in combat. While Bokoblins primarily can be seen eating fish and meat, they've got a love for fresh fruit, and will go out of their way to enjoy whatever they can find, grinning while they chow down on it before finishing with a burp. When by themselves, Bokoblins will dance by the campfire, as well as what looks to be tell stories to each other emphasizing by pointing around as they talk, and even blow little bubbles while they sleep. 
I've even seen Bokoblins riding bears before, and hunting down wildlife all while Link is nowhere nearby. It takes an incredible amount of character to make me feel bad whenever I kill the game's most common nuisance, and it's just a testament to how good Breath of the Wild's Bokoblins are. They truly feel like a real race of primitive, tribe-like creatures. Just as much a natural part of Breath of the Wild's world as the trees are, or the rivers. Breath of the Wild's Bokoblins are not only my favourite appearance of the goblin-like creatures, but my favourite enemy in the series to date. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this. If you'd like to try out the service, head over to squarespace.com forward slash Zeltic for more. And if you haven't spotted it yet, have a little dig through the video for the clue to try and win yourself a Rider Link amiibo. And also let me know in the comments what your favourite Zelda enemy is. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.